uh, I always find when I go back and read the Riverside Bayview Holmes case and, and some of the other uh, Supreme Court decisions from that era and TVA versus Hill, I, I see a lot more focus on the purposes of the statutes and protecting the uh, environment and the goals of the statute being incorporated into the interpretation of the statute and uh, the tenor of the opinions has definitely changed over time. And then coming back to your point about science and the courts and, um, and maybe this is more just uh, an approach to statutory interpretation, but I think there is some issue there of science and, and understanding of the science tied into that as well. Could you talk a little bit about yeah. that science in the courts? Uh, I immediately think when you raise that of um, this of, of um, Justice Scalia's opinion in the Rapinoe's case, and oh. for for us, I mean, uh, just the very notion of someone choosing a 1952 dictionary definition of water and waters and parsing that to come out with this very narrow but also confusing and completely unscientific interpretation of how waters work, of how watersheds work. Uh, so to me that's a perfect example of uh, you know, it, it, he, he completely rejects the basic underpinnings of the Clean Water Act for a 1952 definition with, and without any scientific basis for his opinion. Huge frustration. And it was a frustration to Justice Kennedy as well. <laughs> do, do you find this as an issue in the lower courts as well, in, in litigation? Do you frequently encounter situations where it's difficult to convey to the court the science behind the, the issues? I think, it's, I think it's very challenging to do, to do so. Um, I think it is possible to do so. Again, I think the first thought that comes to mind to me actually goes more to these under the underlying values and understanding of the judge. I mean, these judges are human beings. And on the one hand, you know, we've had situations, I know Southern Environmental Law Center with a very conservative federal justice in North Carolina who was actually a preferred judge because he went fishing. He understood how waters worked. He understood how this habitat was critical to something that was a very important part of his life, regardless of his politics. Conversely, when we're in front of um, a justice uh, um, in Florida, um, in Miami, where I was born and raised, where growing up in the mangroves, you know, fully just immersed in the, in the natural systems, uh, standing before a judge who does not have any inkling of that and is talking about in open court about being at the McDonald's and having a whooping, uh, having a wood stork standing outside and he's feeding him hamburgers. I mean, it's just, it's a huge frustration and at the root of that is just a basic difference in how people are brought up and what they're exposed to and what they understand as a basic appreciation for the natural world. Do you find similar frustrations with um, your work on a legislative level? I imagine with the regulatory agencies, as you said, uh, there's a much better understanding and appreciation of the science. Um, but I, I'm wondering at the legislative level, um, either at the state or federal government, uh, whether you encounter similar frustrations with conveying the, the science and the, the values behind what you're trying to do. Um, I think it's not a matter of intellectually being able to convey the science. I think that's a challenge and that needs, um, and, and we as lawyers have to be very careful about how we do that and at what level of detail, but also making sure that we're accurate in what we're putting forth. But I think it really comes down to whether they want to hear it and whether they're willing to accept it. And I guess my really biggest frustration and disappointment is that we see more and more uh, where legislators 
um, simply they aren't willing to accept and make decisions based on the science because of what that will mean for them politically. It's so there's just it's just it's not that they don't understand it. It's just that they're not willing to pay attention to it.